capable. A bomb affects everything. It was the opening. Now, thanks to state-of-the-art restoration of original film masters, we can see the incredible power of this device in a new way. A technology that has changed human existence forever. The bomb has receded in the public's cement. These cameras were started in motion by... We can imagine. Where did it come from? How? The fundamentals for harnessing nuclear energy began in several places over a relatively short period of time. I'm currently at one of those pioneering research facilities. In the early 1930s, as the facility was being constructed, numerous men and women of all walks of life, from painters to riveters to glass workers to technicians to professors, were being hired to work here. Wanting to live close to their work, houses were being built, and an entire community sprang up overnight. Standing in what used to be one of the facility parking lots, it's an eerie sight here, an apocalyptic sight. A parking area once full of cars is now overgrown, abandoned, unused. The site is in total ruins. It's dark. It's desolate here. It's as if a bomb itself has gone off on this very site. In the distance, we see the atom smasher itself against a bright atomic bomb sky. It's actually scary. I will record the actual runs of the Atom Smasher as I walk down the street from various angles. Former buildings in total runs. Everything that once stood on this site is now gone. Here we see the fallen outer shell of the apparatus that was used for the Van de Graaff generator. Electrical charges in the neighborhood of 5 million volts were built up and stored within this containment outer shell. As a historical side note, the world famous Westinghouse logo was designed in 1960 by Paul Rand. As seen here, the property is fenced in with a barbed wire topping. I have now arrived at the main gate to the former facility.
I stopped in at the local tavern at the end of the street where I found some interesting photos hanging on the walls, framed photos. I was permitted to take photos of these framed photos in their black and white state. More ruins of former buildings, loading docks, Look at the size of the house in relation to the structure. A view of the lower section of the outer shell as seen from the second story of the building supporting the shell itself. Now here is that same lower section after the structure was collapsed. During demolition of the laboratory building itself, brickwork from the laboratory building was bulldozed in front of the structure to keep the structure from moving. Inside the outer shell is even more eerie than being on the outside. An abandoned property in total ruins, a gigantic steel structure, and the residential area behind.
As the Westinghouse Atom Smasher was being built and put into operation, construction at the Oak Ridge Nuclear Facility was also taking place. Oak Ridge paved the way for the Manhattan Project, which was ultimately to enrich uranium for the atomic bomb. Though the Westinghouse facility was intended for the generation of power, it was not publicly stated to be involved with bomb making. However, in 1942 and 1943, employees of the Westinghouse project were asked to join the Manhattan Project. Joe Sleepin and E.U. Condon were two of those people. Several people from the Atom Smasher group were also asked to join in the uranium separation at Oak Ridge. General Leslie Groves, the director of the Manhattan Project, visited the Westinghouse facility several times. So there was a connection between the Westinghouse facility, Oak Ridge, and the Manhattan Project.